CA reporter Liranzo Temba is following the story for us. Liranzo, I've just seen the findings released. Tell us exactly what they say. Well, the findings are quite uh, damning, uh, Shahan, if I had to add it this way. Not only was the mayor of uh, Tswane being exonerated from any impropriety, the chief of staff was also found to have misrepresented her qualifications. As we know that she did indicate in one of the application forms that she ha holds a B.Tech degree, and this was found to be incorrect. In fact, she only has a metric qualification. And uh, one of the things that was also found was that age HR policies within Tswane were not followed, not only by the executive director of uh, human resources department in the capital, but also two of the subordinates. And subsequently to that, those three officials will now have to answer to the city manager as to why they should keep their jobs. And of course, there's going to be legal processes that are going to unfold that will determine whether or not Marietta Orkamp should pay back the money that she now should be owing the city. Um, what was also found, Shahan, was that the appointment of Marietta Orkamp as an acting chief of staff starting from the 1st of September 2015 to her um, current position, which is a chief of staff, that should not have happened. I did pose a question to the city manager as to why was this led to happen, saying that they acknowledge it was a breach in their HR policies. That is the very reason why they've put the three officials um, who have uh, questions to answer, really. So she did say, though, that uh, Solib Zamanga knew about her qualifications. Was that a blatant lie, according to this report and findings? Yes, she did in a statement, a heavily worded statement, mention that it was public knowledge that she only had a metric qualification, saying that she never at any point falsified her qualifications. But according to this report that was released today, it seems she did say that she had a B.Tech qualification. So that was one of the reasons why she was able to be shortlisted out of 17 candidates who were applying for this very same positions. We were also told today that out of the 17 candidates, two of the, um, the applicants did not have the proper qualifications and she was one of them. But despite this, Shahan, she was uh, able to get ahead and able to even bag the 1.2 million rand a year job. And uh, the question that I did pose to the city manager was, what happens now? Will she pay back the money? And the city manager was not able to answer that, saying that he is waiting for processes to unfold, not only internally, but also if there would be any fraud charges that would be brought against her for this misrepresentation. So, Lorenzo, the mayor, of course, and his role in her appointment was something that was questioned, and he's now been cleared of any wrongdoing. So he had no say in her appointment at all. Is that what we're being told? Well, what we're being told is that Maya did not know and did not hire her willingly, knowing that she was not properly qualified. What we're being told is that the mayor was handed over a summarized CV, and this CV just indicated um, basically um, summarized qualifications. That did not include whether or not she had the BTEC qualification or not. And that's the one question that I did pose to the city manager as to, are you telling us that the mayor was in the dark all along with regards to her qualifications and the question or the, rather the answer to that was yes saying that the mayor would not have known what sort of qualifications came with this candidate because she was one shortlisted and two the mayor relied on the hr processes that are unfolding in this very building, in this very administration. I think it's quite important to note, Shahan, that the mayor even went as far in saying that the DA administration should be applauded for their speedy resolve in this matter.
So we know that it's been five weeks since the investigations into this controversial appointment started by the city manager. And five weeks later, we are now given this report, which is on its first phase. We understand that there will be a second phase where all the other political appointments are going to be looked into as to whether or not they've also suffered the same sort of repercussion or the same sort of fate with regards to these um, cracks in the HR systems in the administration. But Salim Simanga says he's staying put, he's not going anywhere because he is found not to have done anything wrong. But he does say that the DA administration should be applauded for acting decisively, acting very quickly, saying that other administrations have irregularly uh, appointed senior officials within the city and have really let it slide and these senior, senior officials are still getting salaries and they are in the process of trying to clean out that sort of um, backlog where we are seeing people that are appointed wrongfully, that are appointed without merit and without qualifications. Yeah, I'm sure he said that uh, any chance to boast about the DA's governance. Uh, let's talk about the recommendations, Liranzu. There's a list of them. Take us through it. Well, the recommendations, one of the strongest ones is the fact that the HR um, officials that have been found to have been um, uh, in the wrong or have been implicated in the appointment, the controversial appointment of uh, Marietta Ogkab should be brought to book. There should be processes that should unfold where it be legal or criminal. And there is also um, a recommendation that the HR policies that were clearly trampled on, that were ignored, or that were just basically set aside just in order to push this um, appointment should be looked into. The city manager going on as far as telling us that, you know, simple things like recording of interviews were not followed, saying that there were clear... Um, uh, times and, and instances where simple HR policies just were not done and they are now going to take it upon themselves to make sure that this doesn't happen again and they're going to be cleaning up the act with regards to the human resources of the city of Tswane. So what's also interesting to note is that this is not the only appointment that's going to be looked at, but other appointments, as I've said, of not only senior officials, but of course of political appointments within the mayor's office, of whether or not they indeed have also been the victims of these HR flaws that have now been put out in the open and exposed.